Hello there folks, welcome to this studio for a live a live watercolour challenge, live 30 minute watercolour challenge. That is 30 minutes of painting time. Subscribe. Why are you waiting folks? Hit that subscribe button folks, hit the bell notification. It all makes a huge difference. So thanks for tuning in and um, sticking around for this live uh, watercolour uh, challenge. Just something a bit different. We're going to pop a clock just here and it's going to count down and whatever happens on this sheet of watercolour paper is whatever we're going to do. I've got no idea. I don't know. I'll start off with the sky and we'll just kind of go through the process. So thanks for joining us live here today. And just want to quickly mention as well, we do also have a sneaky bit of a plug, folks. We've also got the super chat switched on at the bottom so if anybody wants to donate to the eternal struggle of live watercolor painting live on youtube then this is your perfect chance to pop a donation if you want a bit of a shout out a bit of a hello and a bit of a how you doing kind of weird thing then absolutely this is this is your time to do it folks you've got super chat there if you want to um it's at the bottom of the live chat as well thanks to darcy for keeping an eye on the chat as well today um before i start painting folks and i will be very quick i just want to have a little chat about the um live virtual watercolor workshops if you've been taking part in live virtual watercolor workshops over the course of the past 14 15 months they've been an absolute hoot folks that these take place on a weekend and it's me teaching you guys live around the world Today is very much a watercolour demonstration, me painting at my own kind of speed, my own kind of pace. But um, a live workshop is very, very, very much a step-by-step -step process. And if you've taken part in one of those, give us a thumbs up and give people some encouragement to have a go at booking on one. As I'm live here now in the UK, it's currently, I'm looking at my watch, it's currently the 14th of May. Um, it's around about 10 past 5 um, in the afternoon here. The one that's coming up this Sunday, Sunday the 16th, is actually um, a scene of Niagara Falls, okay? Now, it, if you're watching this at a later stage, there's always a live workshop happening, always a live workshop happening. Um, this is the next one. If you're interested, it's, it's £10, which is around about sort of 12 13 dollars roughly um head on over to the website there is a link in the description for this this video as well and you can book on it's only a tenner people say what materials do you need for this three basic colors for the workshop on sunday you need some red some blue watercolor and some yellow these three here are cadmium yellow uh, natural blue and this one is alizarin crimson three colors and you've cracked it and three brushes three brushes like this there's a large brush there, which is like a 16 size. This one's a 10 and this one is a, a six. But three brushes, three colours, and you will produce a watercolour painting. And of course, the subject matter for this one that's coming up on um, Sunday, again, is um, a stunning scene of Niagara Falls in the summertime. But we've been teaching these for a long, long time. And... Every single workshop has something different. You can kind of see here, this kind of shows that we've been teaching them for 60 weeks. And this is a collection of some of the stuff we've been doing. So if you've not already booked on one, get yourself over, have a look on the website, www.watercolor.tv. Click on the workshop tab at the top of the screen and you can book in the latest one. And the one that's on this Sunday, as we said, is the... Um, a scene of Niagara Falls, all broken down into minute detail. Beautiful thing, folks, get yourself in. Massive shout out there to Lynn Fletcher. Lynn Fletcher has popped a donation in, a super chat donation of £4.99. Lynn, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Love the little animation of the little fox popping his... Reminds me of Tails from the Sonic and Tails games. Um, so, yeah, thank you to Lynn Fletcher for the super chat. Every penny that you donate goes back into the running of this channel. And if you look back on the history of this channel, there's a lot of stuff. But there you go. Thank you very much, Lynn, that you are a star. Now, what we have here today is a sheet of watercolour paper, which I've stuck to a board. 
it's around about quarter imperial in size what does that mean it's about 11 inch by about 15 inch but you can do this picture any size it's going to be a quick demonstration and here's the difference today i've got no idea i haven't got a clue what i'm going to put on this paper all i know is i've got a sheet of paper and the palette here i've i've got my palette my standard palette of colors which involve all sorts from greys to oranges to greens to skin tones and we'll talk more about these as we go through the actual painting but i have actually got my own range of paints and you can see them here that particular one is called natural gray these colors are designed for replicating nature we'll talk more about the colors as we go through okay and we'll start the clock in a second as well on this one um brushes wise i've got a few brushes here i've got a I've got some Matthew Palmer blending blades. All the products are available on watercolor.tv, okay? So if you haven't got these colors or you haven't got these brushes, it really doesn't matter. I've got a huge collection of my brushes here and I'll talk about the brushes as we go through the picture. So at this stage, it's a case of grab a cup of coffee, sit back, put your feet up and just relax, okay? That's what it's all about. If you're a beginner, if you're new to watercolor painting, just sit back and relax and watch it. And if you think, oh, you know, I kind of like that. That's kind of for me. That's when you want to get yourself on one of those uh, watercolor, those live watercolor workshops. They are beautiful things to take part in, okay? So let's get to the painting then. And we're going to pop a little clock in the corner here. It's going to count down and start a 30 minute uh, watercolor challenge. I'll also pop um the same clock just here as well at the side of me so we know that this thing is going to be pretty much counting down to a a a 30 minute a a 30 minute project there you go we've got 30 minutes to paint so let's start off by putting some kind of a background in i said i don't know what i'm doing here won't be the first time but um, I'm just going to just go for this thing. Maybe something colourful and vibrant and everything like that. So thanks to Darcy for keeping an eye on the chat because we're all live here. Um, so it's always good to have somebody moderating. So I'm basically wetting the sheet of paper now. It's a fairly big sheet of paper, if we're being honest. So plenty of water. What brush am I using? This is a large blending blade. If you've not got these folks, just a large watercolour brush. Um, so give it a go watch it back at a later stage there's lots and lots of content on the youtube channel i'd love you to uh, subscribe if you've not already and hit the notification bell and also have a look on the some of the previous videos there's, there's hundreds of videos on my youtube channel and um, there's plenty of content to go at so plenty of water here folks all right the focus will fix itself once it starts there's there's nothing to focus on there's nothing to focus on at the minute there we go so we've got water we've got water and um, that's as far as we've got and my first job is to paint in some kind of a background and i want to go for something a little bit colorful if i'm if i'm honest so i'm going to use some nice bright colors with this brush the water's on the paper wet into wet is what we're talking about so over here i want to go for some sort of bright yellow this one is is like cadmium yellow but it's actually natural yellow light and i'll take some of that color and i'm going to pop it across the picture um fairly central focus to be honest so i'll just pop some colors on you've got to stick this through to the end folks anticipation is off the phone cross that brush around these blending blades make painting so much easier they do you can't go wrong really you can smell the fear. Let's get some orange. Let's get some orange, uh, natural orange. If you've not got natural orange, you could simply mix a color from um, red and yellow. Primary colors strike again. Can't really fail, to be honest. Let's bring some orange in. And what we'll do is we'll basically bring it through and we'll get it all mixing through so a nice vibrant sky is what I'm interested in 
So we're about three minutes in at this point. Now, sort of move your brush in different directions as you do this. Don't worry about um, having this thing striped. It's all part of the effect at the end of the day. So just basically blending it all in. There you go, beautiful. So a nice, rich, vivid background, wet into wet background there, which is lovely to see. Cool, okay, that's working. I'm happy with that. Um, back to the palette there then. And then what I'll do here, is we're going to take a little bit of red. This is actually like a crimson or it's natural red in this particular case. We'll take some of that. And what we'll do is we'll just bring a little bit of that. I'm not going to bring huge amounts of red into the picture, but just a little bit works quite nice, actually. But I want to get some rich colours in this sky here and bring some paint into this and make it look as though it's something colourful. So I'm thinking sky, and maybe water, possibly. That's kind of where the mind is going here a little bit. Let's pop some of this red down towards the bottom. Over here. So just little hints of colour. Even if your paper's dry at this point, just keep that paint moving, keep it flowing, keep that... You can see how nice the colour goes in. Um, liking that so far. What I've got here, folks, is a special tool called a sun painting tool. Pop that on. And that's done the sun. It's it's an English five pence coin wrapped in a piece of kitchen paper. And then we're going to go for the same blending blade. But what we're going to do a little bit different here is we're going to pick up some colours. One side of the brush, you can probably see that actually. You can load up different colours on these brushes. So I've got some red on one side. And on the other side, I want to take um, some violet. Some violet. Now... So I've got red and violet on that brush. You can probably just about make it out there. Um, it's a brush that's... It holds colours, basically. It holds colours. And I can add some clouds to the picture with this. And I'm just going to sort of lay this thing flat. I'm just twisting some clouds. That nice red colour. Can you say to get that two-tone cloud effect? And it mixes. And you sort of pull it across. Now, I'm sure you've seen me do this before, but... The blending blades are the perfect shape, one side being longer than the other. It just allows us to add some nice, interesting variations. I love these kind of evening skies because they have lots of impact on the picture, you know. They, they're effective, aren't they, these sort of clouds. So, again, two colours, which is very different. I mean, you wouldn't normally expect to paint two colours in one going watercolours, but here we are doing it. Bring that across. I love the pinks and the reds coming through. It all works nice. We've all seen these wonderful, these wonderful evening skies around the world. Beautiful. Let's soften all this together. Soften it all together. Clean that brush. Give it a good old rinse in the water and then squeeze it through some kitchen paper. Again, all the products are available on Watercolor TV. The brushes, the paper, everything, the paints. If you like any stuff, you want to have a go at a workshop. I'm going to pop a little bit of a advert at the bottom there, folks, because there's one coming up on Sunday. I think I might have mentioned that once or twice. Um, Niagara Falls. We're going to paint Niagara Falls. Step-by-step -step workshop coming up on uh, this Sunday. As I'm here live on the 14th, there's the watch, on the 14th at 25 past 5. We've been painting for almost, almost 10 minutes, about 7 or 8 minutes now. What I'm doing here, folks, is I'm wiping the base of the clouds, okay? I'm wiping the base of the clouds, okay? Which is nice. And I'm going to capture the impression of some light catching them as well. So as I'm doing this, I'm sticking the brush in the water through the tissue. And you can see that you can almost add highlights to the clouds. Imagine this sun is illuminating the clouds, which it would do, of course. 
So I didn't know I was going to paint the sunset until about five minutes ago. You can drag highlights, you can drag lines, and it's just a great way of achieving contrast in your sky. It really is. Beautiful. Oh, big, big, big shout out there to Gabby. Gabby Smith, hello. Um, you are a legend, Gabby. You really are. Thank you for the $30. Um, and Gabby's put, this donation includes a beer for you and Sarah. You know something? It's Sarah's birthday this uh, next weekend. Next weekend. Um, and we are having a few days away next week as well. So, Gabby, that will go down an absolute treat it really well thank you so much you're a star and also thank you for the gifts you sent my little boy jacob as well you're a legend thank you again okay let's just keep fiddling with this sky if people say that you can't fiddle with your sky say get yourself some blending blades send in mr palmer's direction because it's all good fun as long as you create that nice softness loving the colors loving the colors beautiful bit of um, nice richness here. If you're watching this at a later stage, folks, after the live broadcast, head on over to the website, Watercolor TV. There's always a live workshop happening, different subjects each week. For example, last week we painted a, um, a French chateau and a vineyard. It was lovely. It was really, really nice. Again, thanks, Gabby. That's so, so, so generous. It really is. Beautiful. Okay, now that is at a stage where I feel like I want to use a dryer. Um, I've got a hair dryer or a heat gun, this thing here. Now what happens normally is that when I turn this on, the microphone doesn't like it, so it kind of cuts out a little bit. So I'll turn this on and I'll sort of talk over because otherwise it'll cut out. And basically I'm just going to dry this thing. It's a bit of a suspicious looking hair dryer, but it's there. It does the job. I'm not going to completely dry it, just loosely. And uh, it's like watching paint dry, basically. It's as simple as that. So a little bit of a dry here. Almost there. Doesn't need too much. Bring that over here a little bit. The wire is stretching from one part of the studio to the other. I'll dry the armpits at the same time as well. There we are. Now, once it's almost dry, kind of press it flat. Press it flat, moving across, and so on. It's amazing how the colours change when they dry, actually. You can see already the colours getting slightly paler, that little bit lighter. Um, and I'm starting to use my hand now to press this thing flat because that's dry enough to turn that off. Thank you. And um, moving on to the next part of the hair dryer. Um, not the hair dryer, the next part of the painting. It's warm today. It's actually, it's actually warm for a change. It makes a difference. Okay, let's grab some masking tape here then, folks. And what we'll do with this is pop this across the picture, removing the stickiness from the back of the masking tape. Stick it to the table. Remove it, pop it down. Pop that wherever you feel that you want to pop it, probably about here somewhere. Make sure it's relatively straightish. Not going to be exactly, but straightish. And then we can pop in some distance. What kind of distance do we want on this one? Distant cliffs, hills, that kind of thing. Blending blades are going to feature again, but this time I'm going to be using the smaller of the blending blades. And we're going to take some grey. We're going to take some natural grey. Now, natural grey is the staple colour, folks. It's the one that's made from your primary colours, mixed from a red, a yellow and a blue. It's not Payne's grey, so you can mix the colour yourself. Absolutely fine. And we're going to do some distant cliffs and various things coming across here. Bring that across, clean that brush really well, give it a bit of a wipe on the tissue, and then just use water to blend that down. Watercolour is transparent, which means it's really easy to, to soften it and to get, get a grey that is a single, not a very exciting colour, but because it's transparent, you get that nice kind of separation of colours from the background coming through versus the colour that you've applied. So it really does make perfect sense to use something like this. And I just want to make sure that nicely tapers away into the mist, 
take it away into the mist. You can't go wrong. I want to make the colour a little bit stronger. So natural grey, you can mix it from blue, red, yellow. Um, but you just need to um, get the proportions right. That's the kind of thing that we break down in the workshops. So if you want to learn about colour mixing, you don't need all this fancy stuff at all. You just need some standard issue off the shelf colours. Three primary colours for the watercolour workshops. Beautiful. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm going to take the tape off nice and steady, peel it down just a little bit and that'll give me a clean edge. Of course, I've done this while the paper is dry. That works. Can't go wrong. And then over here, I'm going to do something over this side. I think I'm going to put some palm trees in. Yeah, let's have like a, let's have a little bit of Caribbean or a bit of a Hawaii thing going off, I think, on this picture. That'd be quite nice um, to bring that in. So let's do a similar thing over here with masking tape. Let's bring it in. Let's pop some little bits of tape coming in. We'll put a piece there. And then we'll have another piece coming down here. And then, so I've stepped the tape, I've stepped it down, okay? So I'll, I've kind of created like a bit of an edge, press it down well, and then I'm gonna put some rocks and some cliffs in that area. A little bit closer into that so we can see what's happening, but that's that's all good. Again, blending blade, perfect tool for the job. This being the small one. Colours wise, one side of the brush grey. One side of the brush is going to have grey on and the other side is going to have orange, natural orange. Fairly strong with the colours. Now, again, if you've not got these colours, you can mix orange from yellow and blue. So if you can probably make that out, there's a brush there with a couple of different colours on. Ah, thank you to Pat Adams. Pat Adams has donated five Canadian, is that Canadian dollars? Pat, thank you very much. Margot, five euros and 49 cents. You're all legends, thank you so much. It does mean a lot. Thank you again, thanks to Gabby, thanks to Lynn, thanks to Pat Adams for the donation, and of course, Margot, you stars. You really are, thank you very much. Okay, a brush of two colours, a brush of two colours, like Joseph's coat. But that had more than two colours, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it had more than two. Convinced of it. I am. Press that tape down well. Let's go for it. Bloody hell! What's he doing? He's ruined it. He's painted a pile of something in the corner. You're not kidding. Bring it up. Bring it up. What are you doing? You've ruined my picture. Bring it down. There's a weird voice keep floating around the studio. Nice and strong, nice and strong. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Put some of the orange in. My goodness. Work it in. You've ruined it. Get some character. Give it a bit of character. And then stipple. Why, why don't you stipple your brush? Stipple your brush. Give it a bit of a stipple. Give it a bit of a stipple. Giving it a stipple. Because I want to stipple in some foliage. Break the bristle. Can you say I've broken my bristle? You've broken something, Mr. Palmer. Bring it in. Painting some bushes. Yeah, some bushes. And then I'm going to grab a plastic card. Plastic card. And I'm going to scrape in. Scrape out the rocks. Let's get a little bit closer while we do this little step. Scraping in. I'll put some palm trees up there. That'll be lovely, won't it? Put a few palm trees in. Put a few, put a few palm trees in. That'll work nice, won't it? There you go. Ah, thank you to Tiffany, Tiffany Shoemaker. What a generous donation there, Tiffany. Um, all goes into keeping the paint flowing here in the in the world of Matthew Palmer and the YouTube channel. Thank you, Tiffany. Very much appreciated. Big shout out to you and everybody that has um, donated on the Super Chat. It's like, it's the lifeboat tool I call Super Chat. It kind of keeps things running. Keeps the lights on. That's what it does. Keeps the lights on. Real. I love that effect. Now what we'll do, folks, is just start to use something a little bit smaller here. This brush is a size 6 brush. Again, thank you to Tiffany there for that, that donation. Um, just going to pop in a little bit of um, darkness around the edge here as well. That's going to help bring a little bit in. 
right on that edge and then i will take that tape away now if you've ever done this before and you've actually had problems with it ripping when you take it away a good little tip folks what you can do is you can actually use um you can actually use um it's starting to rip a little bit there you can use the heat gun or the hair dryer to take it off and it will come off um, a little bit easier but if you take your stickiness away it's fine but that's giving me that area we'll zoom back a little bit here now so we can see what we've actually got there loving that um so yeah that's just a nice little base we're starting to create a scene here hopefully yeah let's get let's try and get these likes over 100 folks there's 230 people watching this demo live let's try and get some more likes come on you can do this i know you can i know you can i know you can you can i'm sure you can um what we've got over the palette here is um some fantastic brushes some what fantastic brushes you what this one's this is called the fantastic brush it's a matthew palmer fan brush which has got a random speckly edge to it and i want to use this to paint in some palm trees yes um take some natural gray i'm going to mix it with some natural brown i've not used natural brown yet but we have now again if you've not got this folks again primary colors you can create everything from today's demo you can do um you know with just three colors thank you to uh, moma moma mama thank you to moma for the um ten dollars donation shout out to you again thanks to tiffany again uh thanks to margot and pat and uh, gabby and lynn for the donations the super chat donations wonderful 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 legends basically as i want to as i want to describe you i'm going to call you legends i am yes let's turn this on the side and let's get close in here bring that down i've got this nice dark color and i'm going to go in i'm going to go straight up my god he's ruined it again straight up like that and then we're going to do a little bit of a a direction uh-huh get a bit closer in hopefully we can see better and then we're going to pop another one coming up there again that little bit of a direction and i want to build a little piece up at the top as well so i've basically popped in a little bit of a And Ed, but can you see that gives a bit of it almost like a bit of light catching if you just joined us we've painted in two stumps at the side of the sea yeah silhouetting against the sun obviously natural green a nice dark green here i'm going to use that but mix it with gray so it's even darker not being afraid of the dark colors this is the smallest of the fantastic brushes have a look how the brush is nice and spiky on the edge you can see that a beautiful spiky edge brush and that's what we're talking about here let's paint in some of the fronds the fronds okay let's put the fronds on i love i used to love happy days happy memories of of watching the fronds and richie and whoever else was in it you tell me straight over and then drop the perfect tool for painting in fronds, the fronds. Can't go wrong, can you? Bring it over. So a fan brush works great. This is just my particular version of a fan brush. You know, there's obviously there's a lots of different makes of fan brushes out there but this particular one works quite well uh because it's got a very much a random edge to it very much a spiky edge let's pop some more little bits of detail coming up here bring it over we're also going to pop some little bits i'm going to turn it upside down here just because we can and pop in some other bits coming out the other side the other side so we've got a bit of variation going off now, at the minute, that's all very much dark green. We're going to add some more detail to this as we progress through the picture. Let's bring one coming down here as well. Bring it over. Just dropped it on the picture there. That's not something you want to be doing. It looks like we're putting another palm tree in, folks. 
Yeah, it does. It's been a long day today. I've been writing a new book all day. Uh, time check. We're about 22 minutes in, about 22 minutes in to the actual live broadcast here. I'm also going to use this brush for popping in some little bits of little bits of bushes and little bits of detail around. And obviously because I've made that little mistake there, how do you hide mistakes in watercolours? You're painting another you hide it with something. That's what you're doing what calls you hide. You, you hide your mistakes. You hide your mistakes in watercolors every time. Love that. Let's grab a size six brush, folks, which is a normal brush. I've got that same dark color. I'm gonna bring that down here. This is the same dark I was using earlier. This is the gray and the brown. Let's pop in some detail around here and just a little bit of random dark and even just some precise detail here and there on these trees. This is a this is a very much a standard off the shelf brush here. Nothing fancy about this brush at all, apart from it's just a standard issue one. Um you often see those nice little rustic sort of fence posts hanging around at the side of the beach so i'll pop some of those down as well it does give a bit of scale it also keeps the riffraff at bay i think as well that's quite nice you see that nice bit of a silhouette happening there look but having just a normal brush i mean this is a very pointy size six brush here i'm using it's just a good way of adding a little bit of contrast a little bit of shadow to the trees and of course, I will be reflecting all this a little bit later on. This one here on the side, what I'm going to be doing there is using water. Just to ever so gently, just picking up a bit of water on the brush, just ever so gently soften the edges of those trees and work in that little bit of darkness little bit of darkness wonderful let's come back on the whole picture we've got that nice silhouette going off there looking nice there we are happy with that can't go wrong bring up a little one coming down there as well you can just keep adding more and more of these and then over here as well lovely i like how that really sits nice against the sky against the silhouette brill excellent okay let's start to do some work on the water now folks we've kind of got some shape i'll let all that dry we'll come back to it a little bit later on so what i want to do is use a pretty much a standard paintbrush here so actually a size 10 i've got a size 10 brush here a normal everyday round watercolor brush nothing fancy this is the gray we was using i've got some of that going off on the brush nice full brush look how pointy this brush is let's bring in some let's bring in some horizontal movement let's get some movement in the water we all like a bit of movement in the water don't we keep those lines horizontal keeping the light in the center It's all good stuff. We've got about four minutes left painting time here. We're going to go darker with some reflections very, very soon. So basically I'm sweeping the brush from side to side to capture movement, capture direction. And a little bit of reflective as well, which is nice. But obviously, if you look at that there, it kind of works. It looks okay as a picture, but we've got much more darkness. The sky being the big feature here, but we've got darkness here. So we need to be thinking about reflecting. So in the palette, we've got that darkness. This was the mixture of the gray and the brown, if you remember. 
Now, if, if you've not got natural brown, you could use something like uh, burnt umber, or as I call it, bont umber, because I'm from Derbyshire. And we'll bring it in, like bont sienna. We'll get some reflections going off here from the base of these trees, these rocks, this rocky area. And then looking forward to reflecting in those trees. Just making sure that everything sits nicely there. So you can see we've really built up some darkness to capture some reflection there, which is what it's all about. How do you reflect the trees? Well, we need to be thinking about doing that. So a wee bit closer in, that tree slightly goes off to the right, that one to the left. So we'll, we'll try and replicate that as much as we can. The same color, the gray, the brown, ideal, perfect color for the job. It really is. The brown gives the gray an extra kick. So if you've got these natural colors, then obviously it's ideal. Make sure you match these things down here. And then we'll just ripple, we'll ripple the reflection coming down here. Straight off the bottom of the picture, straight off the bottom, don't be afraid, be terrified, bring it in. Slightly leaning to the side on the, in that one. And then the small one, the one that hid Mr. Palmer's mistake, that's kind of levelish, slightly into the left, just a touch, but we'll just bring that in there. And then what we'll do there as well is we'll grab some of that green, we've got a bit of the green. And we're going to add a little hint of reflection, just a touch of reflection of the palm tree. The fronds, happy days. Just that little hint of reflection. And it just starts to create that nice little bit of interest, don't it? I do feel as though I'm down to about the last two minutes, 90 seconds this year. We're going to bring in some reflections over here, a little bit more reflection over here, of course, that is. And right at the bottom, I'm going to pop in some little bits of detail just to represent some interest. Now, if you're new to my YouTube channel, folks, make sure you check out some of the playlists because we've got the watercolour show and there's a new episode of that coming up very soon in the next couple of weeks. Um, and the watercolour show is like a bit of an interactive magazine style show for people that enjoy watercolour painting. Tips, tricks, viewers, questions, all sorts. Make sure you um, do the um, old subscribe and the old... Uh, the old... Um, notification bell if you can't see the bell when you click subscribe it should open up and give you the option to do the notification bell and that should be hanging around somewhere on your screen for you a few little bits of extra ripples around this is proper speed painting it's a bit like speed dating but a little bit more stressful has anybody actually tried speed dating does it still exist is is speed dating still a thing pop some downward lines here might be cool as well on these fence posts and various things. Get some, look at that nice reflection. It really makes a difference. Love the darkness. I hope that comes across that darkness on screen. It really does give some impact. Love it. Can't go wrong. You can smell the excitement. What we'll do is we'll think about adding a little bit of light to the picture. Craft knife. Bit of a craft knife. Let's get aggressive. Let's get aggressive. I don't fancy being aggressive. It, that that is a proper sharp knife that folks that's a belter that giving it a bit of a dry here just because i need to scrape away just to scrape away you need it dry before you scrape as the what's it said to the what's it a little bit of a dry there we go and then we have the craft knife here and we're going to scrape we're going to scratch this is a this is a proper sharp craft knife people say where do i get my craft knives from well it's just actually over here in the corner over there with loads of them i don't know where they came from just just go to your pound shops or your dollar stores or your 99 cent shops and quite it's quite nice to have that little bit of light on 
scrape it away. It is. It's quite effective. You see, you could also apply this if you want to make it look as though one palm tree overlaps another. You could scrape a bit of light. Yeah, I'll scrape a bit of light off it. So you're actually scraping away light, like the sun's catching the fronds and the and the trunks, and just adding a bit of a bit of interest, like so. Can you see how it just adds that little bit of character to it? Oh, we're 30, what, 31 minutes in. That means I need to finish them. It's a shame it's getting quite addictive. Beautiful. I love that little... Have a close look at that area, folks. The beautiful, reflective area that is the corner of the picture. You can't go wrong with that, can you? It's always nice to remove the masking tape on a picture like this as well. It is taking the tape out peel the masking tape away it just kind of nicely frames the picture it does there we go so we've removed the tape we've got a nice looking picture let's pop it against the, the clean grey board there and we have a nice pleasing 30 minute watercolour painted in real time live here I'm going to sign it in the corner I want to sign it Van Gogh so it's worth a couple of million actually I'll sign it Matthew Palmer so it's worth a couple of pounds 2021 30 minutes folks well actually 31 minutes and, and 20 seconds there you go that was pretty good enjoyed that one I hope you did as well um, 30 minute sunset give it a go a bit of a Hawaiian kind of beach thing going off there um enjoyed it enjoyed it if you like that kind of work folks don't forget to check out the live workshops you can see some information at the bottom of your screen now have a go at this the workshops there's no time there's no time limit it's very much steady nice and nice and slow taking his time and just getting the paint flowing have a look on the website watercolor.tv and you'll see all the information on this website here about all the products we've used the workshops and various things Thank you for watching. Thanks for the super chat donations uh, again. And I hope that was inspirational to have a go at watercolor painting yourself. It was certainly a, a interesting thing to do. The sky, the sun, the light from the craft knife, it's all there. That is very much what we call speed painting, folks. Let's check it out. Let's get nice and close in here. We can really see that detail coming through. The craft knife scraping off that little bit at the edge, the craft knife in the water. Just simple, pleasing, quick watercolour. That is what it's all about, folks. It really is. So, that's me, Matthew Palmer. In the first ever, for me, 30-minute watercolour challenge, I crept over by about 90 seconds. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, folks. I'll see you very soon for more. Uh, watercolor painting thanks to everybody thanks to uh, darcy for keeping on the chat thanks to the super chat donations and please subscribe and keep the paint flowing and i'll see you for a live virtual workshop very very soon you can't go wrong can you see you soon bye bye